means not only the force, force joints influence the dam site, the unconformity also determine the strength, stability or waterproofness, water tightness of the dam site. So, in addition to that, so we have the unconformity that also determines. Now, altogether how they influence the stability of the site. We have the different type of rocks in addition to the structure, the different type of rocks also influence. Now, that unconformity I will discuss along with the reservoir because larger area we have to consider for the reservoir. Dam site actually construction site. Reservoir spreads in a larger area. Therefore, it also affects the reservoir area unconformity. Joints, folds, faults also influence, but reservoir site is affected by unconformity as well. That's for we will discuss again there. Now, relative stability of a different type of rocks. We have plutonic rocks, volcanic igneous rocks in general. Plutonic rocks are massive like granite, cyanide, diorite, gabbro, dolorite, they have high load bearing capacity, no porosity, etc. High shearing resistant force they have. Therefore, they are suitable for all types of dam, gravity dam or earthen dam, etc. The load bearing capacity, uniform grain size, everything is excellent. Therefore, they are the ideal if we have in a dam site plutonic igneous rocks that blindly we can go ahead with it. Volcanic rock should be viewed with great caution because in the volcanic activity we have cavities may be interconnected. If joints are there that can be, they can connect the cavities. There is a possibility of porosity developed. These cavities were developed due to cooling of lava, escape of gases, etc. If they are fractured, sheared, cavities get connected, they become good permeable. Therefore, volcanic rock should be carefully viewed. Otherwise, if it is perfectly massive, we can go ahead with it. It means plutonic igneous rocks are good. Volcanic rocks have to be treated carefully. Hippabasal rocks depends on the extent of grain size variation. If the low grain size varies significantly, load distribution is not uniform settlement cracks like may take place often. Therefore, hippabasal rocks are not that ideal as compared to plutonic igneous rocks for foundation of a major dam. If we have a sedimentary rocks, they are layered. Just now we have discussed layered structure as a foundation site. Yes, if they are massive, well cemented, thoroughly compacted, then fine textured, okay, we have uh, the Hidkal Dam or uh, Navil Tirth Dam, this is Malaprabha Dam, we have those on the quartzite, then the site is okay. And the some of the Kali rivers, we have several dams resting on greywack like rock, they are okay. Presence of sedimentary layers causes heterogeneity. This we have already discussed. Caution should be taken if profusely if their rocks are jointed. We have discussed with along with the joints how they affect. In general, sedimentary rocks, if they are of this, okay. If there is a variation, different layers, the thickness of the layer with respect to foundation, if they are jointed, again we have to. Limestone is richly traversed by solution cavities. There can be solution cave-like structure below. They have to be thoroughly investigated. However, if they are fine-grained, massive, it's okay. So, sedimentary rocks are to be carefully seen. Sedimentary rocks like shale are most troublesome. Only earthen dam is okay. Otherwise, gravity dam, other structure impossible on that. 
the problems include a gradual consolidation under a load. Shale like rocks can be compacted subsequently under the load, therefore settlement may take place, unequal settlement, unequal crack, etc. or cracks develop because of settlement and one the crack that is a source of weakness. Liability to shear failure, these rocks have very weak shear force, that is shear resistant force, therefore shear force if applied this uh, immediately they fail, they slip. Rapid deterioration under conditions of alternate wetting and drying. Shale is a soft clay rich sedimentary rock. This clay minerals have swelling and contacting capability. Therefore, because of this variable property under a wet condition and dry condition, immediately means at a very faster rate they undergo weathering, erosion, weakness. So, unpredictable elastic constants they have. Therefore, shale is another problem in design also handling them is difficult if shale is present in a damp site. Yes, if metamorphic rocks, we have different type of metamorphic rocks like they exhibit greatest variation in terms of suitability for damp site, their crushing strength, load bearing capacity, shear resistance, porosity, permeability. It all depends on the type of rock. Yes, compact, Hard, thoroughly crystalline, massive metamorphic rocks like granite knees, quartzite and marbles are ideal. Although marble has low load bearing capacity, quartzite has moderate load bearing capacity considering other aspects they are good. Granite knees have high load bearing capacity, crushing strength is good. Thus, among metamorphic rock, these are that. Schist, slate, phyllite are problematic. We have discussed about the layered rocks similar to that layered rock, this schistosity, slate, cleavages in all respect resemble, behave similar to the layered structure. Therefore, orientation of cleavage or schistosity is important. Therefore, in general, schistose rocks are not suitable for foundation of major structure because of their mica content, cleavage, etc. They absorb water, etc. They are not suitable. Yes, reservoirs. Better, I discuss here uh, the unconfirmity as well. Yes, suppose I have a dam in a dam. I have a dam in a dam site. If I have the unconfirmity reservoir formed, I may have the unconfirmity. I may have the unconfirmity. I may have the unconfirmity. Like there may be unconfirmity oriented in any direction. If unconfirmity is submerged under reservoir. If this is the hill that is abutment or side, along the unconformity, seepage of water may take place, they may lead to collapse or sliding of this. I have quoted the example of Lakhia Dam. Therefore, if unconformity on the abutment sides of the reservoir, etc., is a dangerous. If unconfirmity below the reservoir through the unconfirmity seepage of water may take place, but it may not go to that deep as for several kilometers, therefore no such question, but percolation of water under uh, below the reservoir can lubricate cause sliding earthquake, especially during earthquake. Unconfirmity is a weathered loose soil layer. Waves become, seismic waves become highly heterogeneous and complicated because of refraction and reflection both and if water present and site become very, very delicate, unstable. If unconfirmity is below the dam site, percolation of water, uplift pressure, 
if unconfirmed till reaches at the downstream, there is a direct loss of water from the reservoir. If unconfirmed is there, we have nothing much problem we can live. Therefore, unconfirmed in reservoir, in a dam site is considered as a source of weakness. We have to thoroughly investigate. Yes, friends, reservoir along with the dam, there is a reservoir. How about the reservoir? Now, it is an area developed by water body due to construction of dam. It means huge amount of storage of water, pressure both. Water is available for percolation, create so many problems, lubricate, etc. Therefore, reservoir site, we have a huge amount of water we have to take care, especially reservoir induced seismicity take place. So, geological investigation is needed. Topographically, what is that? Ideally, is a natural valley, a limited area submergence, good amount of storage, preferably a gorge-like situation. Flat lands are generally not suitable, plain lands because large area is submerged, it is not suitable. Water spread is more, cost is more. Groundwater condition, a close relationship exists between the water table and storage capacity of the reservoir. If I have, this is the dam, if this is the reservoir and there is percolation of water, they may build water table, water table becomes shallow. It has one problem, if water table is deep, percolation of water may take place into deeper and there is a loss of water from the reservoir. There is a some kind of relationship between the reservoir and the water table. Water table is a deep problem. Water table is shallow, then problem we have. So, possibility of leakage is high if water table is a deeper like this. Shallow waterlogged area. Siltation or sedimentation is another problem associated with the reservoir. Excessive siltation, sedimentation and destroys the capacity of the reservoir to store water and siltation and sedimentation depends on the large catchment area and many activities that take place in the catchment, land use, land cover modification, mining activity, many things affect the sediment release and therefore the storage capacity, sedimentation in the reservoir. They render the reservoir uneconomical. It is necessary to frequently desilt another problem. Therefore, when we want to have a dam, see, then reservoir, if excessive sedimentation creates a problem, but if we provide a dead storage to accommodate the deposits during life of the dam, we permit certain quantity of sediment. Yes, do take place, we know. For that we accommodate, we call dead storage, within that dead storage sedimentation. Yes, within that permissible limit, siltation, okay, we can manage. Beyond that is a problem. But it is something different. I tell you a story. When the Malaprabha reservoir was developed, initially sedimentation was so high and every year they were surveying the depth of water and sedimentation. And first few years of sedimentation was so high, they were worried at this rate if sedimentation continues, one day the reservoir should be full of sediments only. But it did not happen. After few years, they found depth increased. It means initially there was sedimentation and subsequently that much of sediment did not come. Meanwhile, because of the load of the water, the sediment got compacted, become deeper. In the catchment, because of land use, land cover modification, lot of area developed, 
and vegetation developed, cropland developed, sediment erosion, sediment delivery to the reservoir was reduced. Thus, land use, land cover modification, what way? If we develop the land, it may reduce the sediment delivery. If we damage the land, then it's also land use, land cover. In hospital, lot of mining activity is taking place for Tungabhadra river. Many sediment is coming, nearly 40% capacity of the reservoir is lost. That affect the reservoir capacity. Yes, we have seen. Therefore, land use, land cover in the catchment determine the siltation, sedimentation. That is another important concern in a reservoir in addition to the foundation, waterproof, earthquake, landslides or unconfirmative pools, spots, joints, etc. So, requirement of the reservoir to water spread, the extent of water spread can be inferred from the contour. If we have a contour map generated, how to what extent water storage, how much water can be stored, etc., we can infer from how much water spread, etc. This is based on the survey. Care should be taken not to submerge places of worship during planning submergence. This monument, places of worship, historical, archaeological, UNESCO identified sites, economic mineral deposits, etc., other important places should not be submerged. That care we have to take. Therefore, while designing for a reservoir storage, all these points we have to consider. Therefore, then we decide upon water spread and we infer based on the contour map and preparation of maps of that area. Large depression is ideal. The reservoir should be sufficiently large enough to store water for human purpose. That is, we store the water for supply, water to towns, agriculture, industry, etc. In some year, if rain fails, next year we will be in trouble. If excess rain, thus we should be able to store that water. Therefore, a good Large depression, helpful to store enough water is essential. Therefore, this point also we have to take while survey. So, yes, water tight. Underlying rock should be free from serious leakage, which may further increase under pressure when the reservoir is full. Therefore, water tightness. One is to avoid loss of water. Second, it's a behavior under a load, especially in presence of water, this may become their stress, shear conditions, resistant force, etc. affected. Therefore, what is the water tightness of that rock? What is the response of the rock under presence of water, the load, etc. we have to study. Therefore, large area we have to study, wherever water is spread, we have to consider. Impervious and massive rocks are ideal. They ensure storage of water without any seepage or leakage and hence that kind of condition. Do we have that kind of situation in the entire basin is important. Free from serious, serious joints, faults, shear zones, both in the reservoir as well as in the dam site. In the dam site, how they affect, we know. In the reservoir site, it, they lead to loss of water. They should not be many. We cannot say there is no joint, no fault, no shear zone. It, these are all there, but they should not be too many because reservoir is a large area. We cannot escape. In a dam site, somehow we can manage. We can ship the site, we can improve the site, but hundreds of square kilometer area, we cannot improve the site by grouting or some other ground treatment, ground improvement method, not economical in the reservoir site. Therefore, they should not be too many if certain extent we can manage. Often they are completely sealed, possible to seal and made impervious, it depends on their location with respect to dam in the reservoir in the catchment 
it is possible to improve sometimes it is necessary example i have quoted the example of a super dam abutment rocks are highly they have fractured sheared especially in rainy season they become saturated sliding etc therefore in the reservoir said these especially in the vicinity of the dam that can be sealed by grouting or some ground up improvement technique whatever the technique there should not be active faults or faults having wide opening in the reservoir site if that is there what do we do can we get away this or manage we cannot totally escape we have to take special care about those active faults whenever there is a earthquake we read in a newspaper that koina dam is safe hidkil dam is safe koina we know very well it is seismically active we have selected hidkil dam it is not that seismically active like koina but the underlying rocks are so severely fractured sheared especially the reservoir site and we are worried about its safety therefore people are given warning whenever earthquake hidkil dam is safe people say whenever there is a heavy rain people talk about linganamakki so this uh, tungbhadra yes heavy rain tungbhadra dam 1 meter left sharavati yes half meter left like that because earthquake is not the major problem there siltation is the major problem there therefore depends on the local setup different precaution is necessary dam site should be free from such major active faults especially common in north india this no considering this see what should be the reservoir site how it should be no underground caves should be there caverns solution valleys which are common in limestone country rock therefore thoroughly we have to investigate if reservoir site is on a limestone terrain we have to specially investigate for presence of caverns and solution cavities or caves like if absolutely free from porosity fine but invariably they do consist limestone should be thoroughly studied and make sure that they are completely free from caves etc rigid and strong walls valleys these rigid and strong valley slopes are essential impounded water is stored in the valley these rocks always in contact with the water there should not be any seepage or loss of water they should be strong enough to withstand the water pressure and should not allow water to percolate therefore these rocks also should be thoroughly investigated wall should be free from joints faults dipping away from the reservoir even the unconfirmed we just now we have quoted the example of lakia dam yes weak zone the stored water seeps through them we have to thoroughly investigate if they are inclined away from the reservoir it most dangerous on the other hand if they are inclined like this there is no chance means again it is the slope water do not flow so if fractures are like this there is a possibility of log if fractures are like this there is no such severe loss of water therefore it's okay landslide is another especially in a rainy season and just now we said about a lakia dam landslide therefore landslides is another serious problem in the reservoir site especially in the periphery of the reservoir where steep slope of thick soil cover as we have in supa some other area yes this is another problem we have to thoroughly investigate yes sir then high bearing capacity of the this is not necessarily for the reservoir but for a dam site impounded water exerts enormous pressure on the bedrock below and the walls they should be rigid and have very high bearing load bearing capacity 
and able to withstand the weight and pressure of the water. This is especially true for in the vicinity of the dam, in the dam site, not farther, farther away from the dam where reservoir is spread. Okay, there are other properties are required. Bearing capacity is not that matters there. High resistance to reaction. The stored water is directly in contact with the rocks. If the rocks and water react, they should be highly resistant to reaction with water. There is a possibility of some kind of a chemical weathering, corrosion take place at places, etc. Therefore, the reservoir water should not react with the rocks with which they are in contact. Therefore, we have to thoroughly investigate the composition of the rock, nature of the rock, and do they undergo this kind of reaction, etc. We have to. Example, I give in some other context. Bommanhalli, it is a, there is a pickup dam, it is called. They have constructed a dam here, Bommanhalli. From there, they bring water to the Sykes point. From there, they generate water at a Nagzeri. It is only from store water and divert that water to here and they bring it here. There is a dam, but for local people, this water is not suitable for drinking. They get water from elsewhere. What is the funny? They have a nearby dam, very close to that, but they cannot drink. It is mainly because this water is highly reacted with the rocks below it, manganese and iron. It is contaminated. Therefore, if that water is to be used for drinking, therefore the water should not react with the rocks there and undergo chemical change that makes the water not suitable for some purposes or they change the composition of the rocks and modify it. Then also it is a loss. Therefore, we have to thoroughly investigate. Now, one major problem with the reservoir is the sedimentation. How, what are the causes? Nature of soil in catchment area is one thing. If they are very loose, very small particles, easily can be transported by the natural agencies, we have a severe soil erosion and sedimentation. We study sediment yield, that is nature of the soil sediment, the gradient of that rainfall, many things we study. What is the response of, of the catchment character, whether they release enormous quantity of sediment into the reservoir, we study. That is all depends on nature of the soil. Topography, in the reservoir surrounding there, we have steep gradient, obviously more sediments can be delivered to because of the flowing energy, flowing water energy. It is dependent on the slope. Cultivation in the catchment area can prevent sedimentation. Just now we have mentioned Malaprabha Dam where first few years there was a higher rate of sedimentation, subsequently sedimentation ceased because of land use, land cover modification. Type of cultivation they do practice is important. And then vegetation cover in the catchment can bring down, but removal of vegetation as we have in hospital or surrounding area, there are lot of mining activity, removal of vegetation, soil uh, loss, erosion, sedimentation in the uh, reservoir. Anthropogenic activity just like mining, it had happened in Saudati also, there was a large scale quarrying for so many construction activities, etc. How do we manage the sediment? One is the catchment vegetation, by that we can prevent sediment loss, erosion loss from that. Construction of check dam, if there is any reverse tributaries flowing into 
and joining the reservoir and we can construct a sediment trap or chuck dam and block the sediments there itself once it enter the reservoir difficult to handle desilt them therefore flushing and desilting of sediments is another program low level outlets we can provide only water to flow and sediment to trap and small outlets where we can manage the sediment entering into reservoir and we can check the dam and reservoir do have impact on environment and we talk not much about the environment that is with respect to fold faults that how exactly they create submergence of forest land is one loss due to reservoir that we know displacement of the people uh, that is another loss water logging and salinization yes that is another loss because of creation of huge reservoir and they have direct impact on the environment effect on groundwater quality yes these are all environmental what is a geo environmental reservoir induced seismicity that is more important reservoir we generate a huge amount of water pressure the rocks if subjected to water pressure seepage uh, movement and then because of this we may have the seismicity we call reservoir induced seismicity then it is difficult and endanger not only the reservoir and dam site etc additional design safety factor is required because underwater earthquake generate tsunami wave like this tsunami wave can hit the dam and additional load capacity it has to have therefore complicated additional safety factor in our design is necessary therefore all these are the effect of the reservoir so this is then large scale change on a natural topography take place because of a reservoir one is land use land cover modification people do change agriculture because of water availability uh, landscape development is one when you store the water yes so much of area submerged that is another pattern of a change in the natural topography the flow of water is another change because of availability of water land use land cover change another there are several activities rehabilitation program construction of a road and infrastructure all those to complete manage handle and some uh, hydroelectric project to come etc for all this land use modification is necessary there is a change in topography and because of change in topography there is a possibility of landslides example carwar landslide in 2009 october there was a land use modification because of seabird project a lot of excavation on the road side road widening we have a kadra dam kaiga reservoir konkan railway all this because of the availability of the resources land use land cover changed and topography modified we had so much of severe problem emission of greenhouse gases due to rotting that is environmental loss it is not strictly geo environment it is environment so but that is the impact of a dam on environment but primarily we are concerned with geo environment yes lowering of the water table originally if water this is the original water table if reservoir water table become become shallow 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 water table in especially hilly area result in spring formation and that may lead to the landslides as well saturated land mass can slide when the water table was below well below the land soil layer was not saturated now water table is shallow 
if added by rainfall then there is a saturated soil zone which can slide since the recharge from river channel is considerably decreased downstream the groundwater storage is effectively reduced downstream if we have a dam and sorry if this is the reservoir and here here there is a storage of water flow of water is checked because of the reservoir and natural seepage of water recharge take place which were taking place now they are all reduced therefore there is no recharge therefore water table moves downward on the other hand water table here become shallow shallow that creates one problem this creates another problem this affect is shallow wells to dry up if in the surrounding area shallow wells are there they get dried people go for deeper 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 they suck water but it is not getting recharged you remove the lot of water but they are not recharged what happens aquifer is left with cavities i explain suppose we have a well here there is a water we are taking out water taking out water taking out water if there is a recharge yes we are happy but if there is no recharge we take out the water take out the water from the well we take out the water we take out the water now from the surrounding aquifer water flows into the well here whatever the water which were present were able to exert pressure now those water i removed there is no such a pressure upward because of pressure from up they may compact they may collapse so subsidence underground collapse are common wherever we have therefore this results in uneven distribution of water table shallow wells deep wells subsidence are common all these are the indirect effect of the reservoir this affect the shallow wells and dry up downstream migration of wildlife during construction of dam yes land use land cover change rehabilitation people may come and therefore wildlife of the forest do not get enough water in the downstream especially they migrate and here because of the developmental activities a disturbance to the animals they also migrate although we have good amount of water but we will not get therefore wildlife migration take place that is another loss on biodiversity wildlife sanctuaries get severely affected growth of forest plant there was a flow of water there was a growth of forest but because of non availability of water downstream of the dam forest growth is affected yes it is not just the dam alone even the tunnel site is another important where the geological condition affect like fold faults unconformity determine the site how exactly in a tunnel project they affect geologically only two types of tunnels we have one is rock tunneling another one is soft ground tunneling or unconsolidated weathered soil zone loose material we have type two types of tunnels if we have a hard rock like this a circular tunnel we drive if it is a loose soil we have loose soil then the tunnel is of this shape now the very design of the tunnel is different loose soil we have this because we want to transfer the pressure to the ground so that no much load is coming this should be stable whereas this is a hard rock they are capable of therefore circular shaped tunnels we prefer even the nature that is the design of the tunnel is also dependent on geological condition based on that we have rock tunnel soft ground tunneling our problems execution design 
safety factor to be involved, everything varies. Okay. Geological consideration tunneling include what is the type of rock? Are they hard, crystalline, or the layered sedimentary rocks, soft rocks, their crushing, everything is required. Their porosity, permeability, hardness, everything. Then the geological structures are the folds, faults, unconfirmity, layered rock, non-layered rocks like ground water table. What is the water table is well below the tunnel or well above the tunnel, within the tunnel. Example, Konkan railway tunnel near Butkal, this is a tunnel was passing here. This is a Butkal hill and water table was here. The tunnel was passing below the water. Tunnel was passing below the water table. There was a heavy rush of water. Obviously, what they did, they pumped out of the well, pumped out the water from the tunnel section and thus artificially lowered the water table. When they lowered the water table and pumped out, then in the surrounding all wells got dried because water table went down. Therefore, groundwater condition is another important, especially in the tunnel site, whether the water table is well below the tunnel section, excellent. If water table above the tunnel section, we have a problem. Pump out problem. If you do not pump out, then also we have a problem. Therefore, if you pump out surrounding wells, you dry, loss of water. If you do not pump out, we have seepage of water. So, for groundwater condition is another important factor. Now, tunnel through igneous rocks. Igneous rocks, cost of excavation is high because very hard rock. It is a time consuming. If they are generally not that much, if joints cracks should be sealed if present. In plutonic or many igneous rocks, we have some problem of excavation, then blasting, all those things are required. It is a time consuming construction. Invariably, we deck in the Pune, Bombay, we have seen invariably joints, cracks, heavy rainfall area, seepage. We have to seal them, grout them, rock bolting, rock jointing, etc. Every possible precaution we have to take. Those, therefore, costly, massive, expensive, not massive cracks, then also expensive. So, this is a kind of challenge. Safe and stable re tunnel requires no lining or support, minimum maintenance. Cost can be driven at any direction. That if we do not have such massive kind of rock, problem. If they are safe when no lining is required, very hard rock, yes. Sir. No support is required, no collapse, minimum maintenance cost. So, these are all possibility if we have suitable rock. If in the tunnel zone, if we have a weathered zone, we have heard some Konkan railway near Idugunji, near Honavar, people died, land collapsed, etc. Because between the lateral terrain, there was a clay bed, it was a very soft layer. And it was a weathered during excavation, especially heavy rainfall area, they get exposed to water, etc. They swell. And because of that, there was a collapse and people died. Therefore, in a tunnel section, if we have a weathered zone, weathered zone, we have the problem. We have investigated some go kark site where it, this is the tunnel, the rocks are gently sloping and there was some clay beds were there and there was a collapse of this. So, therefore, any weathered zone in the tunnel section, we have to take extra care, carefully have to handle, if where possible, we have to avoid. There is nothing like in a tunnel project, we can escape, we cannot totally leave away the site. It We have to drive. Volcanic rocks, 
vesicular basalt should be grouted and sealed because they are the source of weakness through which percolation take place. Therefore, if it is a igneous rock, these are the necessary care we have to take. Tunnel if through metamorphic rock, hard rock like gneisses, quartzites are safe and stable. Weak and soft rock like schist, phyllite, slates and marble require protective inner lining. What is lining? Our water tank, what we do to prevent seepage? Lining that is similar lining is required for a tunnel on and rock bolting, rock jointing is required often that is if the side of rocks are highly weathered, shattered etc. Here we grow a rock different blocks we connect through rock bolting just then I have explained like that. So the rocks if highly jointed especially metamorphic rocks sometimes quartzite also sometimes marble also they are all like this they require a lining and support this joint block should not fall we require support they require support pillars rock bolting jointing etc are essential in a tunnel project where rocks are jointed especially metamorphic rocks they have cystosity, cleavage, etc., especially weak rocks. If a tunnel through sedimentary rocks, hard rocks like sandstone are safe and stable. Soft rocks like shale, limestone requires a lining. Again, it depends on the orientation of the sedimentary rock that is with respect to deep and strike that is different. As long as a tunnel passes through single type of rock throughout safe it is. Unconsolidated sediments, just now we have explained this is unconsolidated sediments, horseshoe shape type of tunnel we prefer, we have to take support for them, otherwise collapse, we have to divert the load to the ground like that. So alluvial, glacial deposit, gravel, boulder beds etc lead to collapse if we have such kind then we have to take additional care or avoid. They require protective pillars, groundwater problem becomes severe because these are highly porous and permeable especially in heavy rainfall area they flow like river and then severe problem. Precautionary measures are needed. Yes. Geological structure, just now we said, dip and strike of the beds. If the beds are horizontal, inclined, steeply inclined, are they folded, faulted, shears or unconformity, many things affect the stability and accordingly precautions are required. Example, I have a sedimentary rock, layered rock and our tunnel whether this side, this shape, this shape runs through a single rock formation throughout so long as this rock layer is safe, my tunnel is project is safe all through length of the tunnel, a similar condition exits, execution, management become easy. Tunneling in horizontal strata in any direction is favorable. Although it should be mass, rock should be massive resistant then it's the same through a single layer is a free parable if it intersects with the several layers i may have the problem layers are thin enough then problem roof has to be modified to an arch if thin layers are there there is a possibility of collapse i have to modify the roof into arch like and that has to be protected by lining if the joints and fractures are there, I have to investigate, take special care if it is sedimentary rock. Now sedimentary rocks may be inclined, may be inclined like this. Then we have the problem that is if sedimentary rocks are like this, now several problems I in simple if these are the layers of sedimentary and if a tunnel is running, what are the problems? This is a sloping bed. I have shown here. 
with a different degree. If they are gentle, problem. If they are steeper, less problem with respect to sliding is concerned. Okay. If with respect to other, for example, tunnel is passing through this rock, this rock, this rock, all types of rocks, accordingly the blasting excavation program vary. One, if it is a heavy rainfall area along the bedding plane, there is a seepage of water, water rush into the tunnel, I have to handle those water, I have to drain out them or provide a natural gutter. If my requirement of the tunnel diameter is a 3 meter to provide additional gutter, 3.5 meter like that, these are all the cost. Because seepage of water may lubricate sliding is possible, therefore I have to prevent this sliding, I have to provide support and a lining. In case of sedimentary rock which are inclined, especially gentle, slip, leakage of water, seepage of water, I have to handle that water. Support is required. Cost of the tunnel varies with length. These are some of the problems if rocks are inclined. Yes. If rocks are vertical, yes. Clip may not be there, but along the length of the tunnel, I get a different type of rock. Their blasting, excavation, all those things are required. But lining may not be required. Like this, a seepage of water or and slip may not be there. Seepage of water, vertical fracture or bedding plane, water can enter. That That is there. But a slip is not there. That is the disadvantage of inclined bedding plane. So, if moderately inclined strata, we have this other problem. Now, rocks are vertical. There are two possibilities. Yes, we have the rocks. Yes, if rock layers are like this throughout the length of the tunnel, only one rock formation, tunnel project becomes simpler. If on the other hand, if rock layers are not thick enough, tunnel intersects two or three formations, then I have to consider this rock, this rock, this rock. Therefore, depending on the thickness of the bedding plane, the project cost and problems may vary, especially when rocks are inclined or steep angle, vertical, whether the tunnel passes through single formation is ideal. If it intersects several formation, we have to take precaution. Like all those which we have mentioned, lining, support, etc. If a tunnel passes through single rock formation, it's okay, excellent. If it passes through different formation, then seepage is likely. I have to take care of. Yes, if beds are folded, there are different situations. If beds are folded like this, I may have to drive a tunnel like this. This is the case across the folded beds. I may have to drive the tunnel like this all along the length of the axis of the tunnel fold and tunnel parallel. That is, or I may have to have a tunnel along the synclinal axis, anticlinal axis, across the folded bits. Different situations we have. Folding of rocks introduces considerable variation in a rock pressure, high pressure, here low pressure, sorry, here is a low pressure, here is a high pressure, tensional force, compressive force, etc. Different situation, here, shear, force may develop. Therefore, along the bedding plane, the pressure distribution is something different than when beds were perfectly horizontal. Therefore, uncertainty exists when such rocks are there, tunnel project has to consider carefully what are those. In anticlinal folds, if this is the anticlinal folds, this is anticlinal folds, the rock crushed by arch action, this is an arch action, 
transferred to the limbs. This is a tensional force is there, which may be highly strained. This part is strained now. These conditions are reversed in case of synclinal fold. In case of synclinal fold, this is different. When excavated, excavation is done through these folded rocks, energy is released and that energy may result in a fracturing here or here. Folds can be converted into faults as well, sudden release of energy immediately or soon after and leading to some problem. Therefore, even well after the tunnel project is completed, a tunnel fails immediately also fail because of this. Therefore, they may develop a fault. We have to be careful. Yes, tunnel if passes through. Here, problem is we have heavy rainfall area. We have the seepage of water into the tunnels, into the tunnel. We have to take care of, along the length of the tunnel, we have different type of rock, we have to take care. And the limb parts are actually loaded with strain and we have to be the highly strained. We have to take care, yes, all this. If it is the case, we know due to synclinal nature, it is an artesian condition. Water has a tendency to flow into that and get accumulated. Heavy ground water or water pressure we get in a tunnel project. We have to pump out the water. Because of water, the bedding planes slip, get lubricated, sliding, etc. Sliding is in the common. I have to take precaution about the sliding that is line, support, etc. is required. I have to pump out the water, depends on the water table. So, these are some of the problems when I have the tunnel passes through synchronal. Hence, necessary to measure, necessary measures are to be taken during tunneling. Also, folded rocks are often storehouse for artesian water, just now we said. An effective drainage system has to be adopted. All this result in additional level of expenditure. One more. If a tunnel is passing through all along the anticlinal axis, it is fine. Water has tendency to move away from each other. No rush of water into the tunnel. Second, because of tensional force, tensional force, rocks are weak, easy to excavate. And because of tension, these rocks develop often wedge-shaped joint pattern. Because of wedge-shaped joint pattern, these joint blocks are self-keyed. They do not slide into the tunnel. They do not slide into the tunnel. Third, all along the length, the same rock formation exists. Therefore, initially, whatever the plan I have, the same plan throughout the rest. Therefore, there is no much deviation in the plan I have done. Execution becomes simple. It means I do not have any lining, no support, grouting, etc. required, joint blocks are self-supported, water has tendency to move away from because of tensional force, the rocks are weak and easy to excavate. Whereas the reverse is in case of tensional, sorry, synclinal condition, just now we have mentioned artesian condition, compressive, water has tendency to move. All those problems are there. Yes. Faulting is another. That is another problem in the tunnel project. If we have the fault like this a tunnel, then there is a direct seepage of water into the tunnel. There is a possibility of slip movement along the tunnel. Example, if this is an area, if I have a fault plane, 
if a tunnel is crossing the fault plane along this if movement to take place tomorrow tunnel site this happens tunnels also get dislocated that lead to many accidents of failure functioning of the tunnel therefore if a faults across the tunnel project severely we have to investigate we have to grout them all along enormous cost we have to seal them ensure that no movement take place in future inactive faults are safe tunnels in upthrown or downthrown blocks are stable and safe either only this or only this is safe but if tunnel pa crosses the fault plane then the problem starts along the strike of the fault plane is a hazardous if tunnel it is unsafe perpendicular to the fault plane this is the fault plane tunnel crosses unsafe precautionary measures are very essential such as support grouting lining etc with respect to water table what are the problems in the tunnel there are three possibilities if a tunnel exists tunnel x is may pass entirely through impervious formation above the water table no problem safe if tunnel x is located mostly above the water table intercepting the aquifer local problems are there if it is well below the water table then we have the plenty of problems just now we have discussed see another problem we may have a river valley because this is a faulted zone all along the fault we do find a river and if the tunnel passes through fault zone heavy seepage of water into the tunnel take place and additional care is required enormous quantity of water come to the tunnel and whatever just a program we take that is not adequate here also we have to take precaution so additional precautionary measures are required the tunnel x is located below the water table it is the worst such situation should be avoided as far as possible wherever the tunnel enter the saturation zone effective drainage system drainage should be provided in the tunnel we heard konkan railway we read in heavy monsoon netravati express is delayed by 3 hours like that because heavy rain percolation the tunnel whatever the drainage we have provided is not adequate to drain out in a tunnel we cannot provide extra gradient to drain out the water that is one problem because of a high accumulation of water it is not drained out that easily gentle gradient water is not drained out steep gradient i cannot provide bigger uh, uh, drain a gutter if i have to provide additional cost uh, and track is a water logged in such cases we have to wait these are the problems therefore in heavy rainfall area tunnel if especially below the water table heavy water seepage water logged area these are common therefore such situation should be avoided as far as possible whenever tunnels enter the saturation zone effective drainage system is very essential this necessary precaution we have to follow if tunneling is in a soft rock just now we have said in unconsolidated material this is a tunnel cross section this is unconsolidated material now there is a possibility of collapse these are highly porous and permeable these are highly weathered they do not have load bearing capacity all these are the problems complication arise because structural weakness of the sediments this is one position of the water table very highly porous and permeable their tensile and shearing strength is so low they collapse they slide permeability of the ground because of heavy rainfall there is a severe percolation of water etc is so common therefore under this condition 
tunnel through soft sediment or soft ground is very challenging we have to provide strong lining all through and then transfer the load to the ground especially during vibration or passage of train because this vibration there is a collapse and we have to take precaution yes another problem is over break i have this is the ground i have the tunnel required of 3 meter diameter or whatever but i have to cut extra two three reason one is i have to have a lining this one second i may have to provide support third i have to provide the gutter on either side to drain out the water although my requirement is only 3 meter 4 meter diameter extra i cut during extra cutting what happens although this area are safe my tunnel but extra area there may be some other rock so that is over breaking of rock unfavorable condition i may come across where accumulated toxic gases like carbon dioxide we have heard in such and such project people were trapped and exposed to carbon dioxide methane dioxide people died we have heard especially in a country limestone country caves like we need to provide ventilation yes in addition to this such weak zone we come across therefore extra excavation normally involved in many of the project and the quantity of rock broken and removal in excess of what is essentially required in addition to the tunnel exactly extra we cut that we have to handle that is a cost it results in additional cost and problems problems like we may come across fracture zone i have investigated my tunnel passes through this layer this layer of rock is safe and i have designed but because of extra cut these rocks are not safe problem arises so over break in the tunnel also create some problem how exactly i have to deal with them depends on the condition over break points to be considered what is that nature of the rock in the over break part in addition to exactly tunnel alignment orientation spacing of joints in the over break part is additional problem i have to handle in case of sedimentary rock the orientation of the bedding plane is another important factor we have already discussed especially when it intersect the unconformity example if this is the tunnel tunnel if we have an unconformity like that whether unconformity oriented this way this way along the unconformity see page of water take place now i may take precaution because this layer is a safe for me all along this but unconformity intersect and this over break rock here on either side are very weak especially with respect to seepage of water unconformity intersect water flows into addition in addition to water seepage into the tunnel they may damage the over break rock which are very sensitive for water slip movement some of the tunnels which we have executed especially around goka we have seen this clay beds are there along on our coast we have seen that clay bed is actually tunnel passes through lat right but because they had to cut extra that is a clay bed that clay bed collapse danger have happened people have died therefore additional problems result especially in sedimentary rocks orientation of spacing of joints is in case of sedimentary orientation of the bedding plane thickness of the beds with respect to alignment of the tunnel if throughout the same rock formation fine if in the over break very thin layers i have selected this layer this was thick enough 
I have planned my tunnel, but over break this is very thin layers, then problem starts. Therefore, friends, whether it is a dam, tunnel, reservoir, multi-story building, bridge, I have taken the example of only these three, but irrespective of the project, whether it is a fold, fault, unconfirmity, joint, anything, they create enormous problem. Therefore, we have to deal with them very carefully. Now, whatever the outcrop I study, the boreholes I study, electrical resistivity I study, the interpretation of this is not simple straightforward. Under the circumstances of these structural defects, deformation, I have to treat them separately, carefully and seriously have to look into, integrate all my observation for satisfactory delivery of the project. Thank you, friends.